In this video, let's talk about navigating around your Flutterflow project. Now, I'm not talking about navigating in your app like your users do, so when they click on a button, it brings you to this page. I'm talking about navigating around when you're building, like you've built this page and then you wanna to go to another page, maybe you wanna check something, add a parameter to a page, things like that. And there's three ways you can navigate around. The first one is right over here. So right now, I have my widget tree and my page selector split up into different tabs, different sections. And so I can just click in here to go to the page and select a page and I navigate to that page. So my pages and my widget tree are in different panels, but you can have them stacked on top of each other in one if you just click this little button right here. And so it stacks it so that page that now disappeared from here is now on top and my widget tree is on the bottom. Now, this is the view I normally like to design in because it allows me to sort of quickly move between pages designing down here and I find it to be the most useful way to work now up here let's talk about these buttons and these buttons are going to be the same whether you're in this stacked view right here or whether you're in the view that has it broke out into different sections so these are the same buttons so let's go back in here let's make this like this and you've got two sets of buttons right here these ones over here will control the view down here and what's shown down here. And these are actions. So over here, you can see we've got icons for the pages and components, and here we've got the one that selected both. So if I have both, this is gonna show both my pages down here, and that's why these have these page icons, and my components right down here. So these are together. But if you want to just see your pages or just see your components, you can select those and it'll just filter them out of here. This is helpful when, for instance, you have a lot of pages or a lot of components to be able to filter down really quickly. Okay, so that changes the view over here. Now over here, we have different actions. So if I'm on the pages and components, I've got create new folder, create new page, create new component. And when I go through here, we're gonna have slightly different options where because I'm on the pages, I can see all the pages I have in my app. And of course you can navigate there by clicking into it creating a new folder or creating a new page. And when you're in the components, you have the same options to view all components. And of course you can click on them to navigate to them, create a new folder or create a new component. Okay, so that's the first way to navigate around pages. The second way is to use the command palette. So let me switch back over here so I can see my pages. And your command palette comes up when you hit command K and then you can search through your projects for almost anything. And you can use this to navigate to pages or components or tabs over here that we'll look in a second. But for now, let's just navigate to a page. And so let's go to the create budget page. So if I just do create budget, you can see that it pops up first. And if I click enter, I'll navigate to that page. Okay, that's great. But maybe I wanted this create budget begin page. And so if I pull up my command palette again, I can go create budget and it's the second one and I can just click my down arrow to navigate here up and down and go right there. Okay, sweet. Now, in order for that command palette to be like actually useful, your pages and your components need to have good semantic names. That is names that describe in the best and simplest way possible what that page is. So you can kind of have all of them in your mind so you can quickly reference them when you're navigating between pages. Okay, that's way number two. The last way is with our storyboard. And so that's over here. And of course you could get there by clicking on it, but let's do it the fun way with our command K and go storyboard and it's a tab, that's that icon. So let's move there. Sweet. Now let's zoom out a little bit and you can see you've got your whole app laid out here. Okay, so let's talk about what storyboard is and what you can actually use it for. So there are a couple of different things. First, you can obviously use it for navigation. So if you have more of a visual memory of what your pages look like, say like for instance over here, you've got this card page and it's got this real distinctive card gradient up here and then I've got my income and spending right down here and that's like an easy visual clue. So maybe if I wanna navigate there, I can just come to my storyboard and when you double click on it, it'll bring you to that page. So that's one way to use it.
Now notice one of the cool things about Storyboard is it remembers state. So this was my last view and it remembers your view. And it also remembers if you change the organization of these pages. Now, why would I want to do that? Well, maybe the default layout either obscures something like a path. So you can see these lines right now are all overlapping each other, but there's actually multiple lines in here. And so I can pull that up and it helps me to see the navigation a little bit better. Also, we don't just have navigation and login routes visualized here. We also have bottom sheet actions visualized. So over here on this card page, you can see that we've got one of these right down here. It coincides with a navigate action. So that's why we've got these overlapping lines. But if we follow this down, we can see that we've got Way down here, we've got this bottom sheet. And so maybe you want this closer to the page that's using it. So I'm just gonna drag it up here all the way to my sheet right there. And it's gonna remember this UI. And I like that because now my bottom sheet is like right next to my page. Okay, so you can use this for navigation. You can use it for visualizing your user flow. And you can see an even more simplified UI. If you zoom all the way out, you get this simplified pattern right here. It can be helpful when you wanna see these large scale patterns of how your user moves through your app. Okay, so two more things about storyboard that are important. The first thing is that most of these widgets you can just see are visible and that's indicated by these circle icons right here. But if you have a hidden widget over here and it could be hidden because it's under a tab or maybe there's conditional visibility set, but you'll get this square icon to indicate that, hey, you're not seeing something in here, but there is a navigation in here. So that's helpful. And the last thing to take note of is that when you select a page, it will select all the routes and highlight it. So you can focus in on just the user navigation on that page and on those widgets. And finally, if you've moved a bunch of stuff around and don't really like it and want to start again with the original layout of the pages, you can just come up here and it'll reset that. And those are the three main ways to navigate in your project in Flutterflow.